I just want to talk about um, making sure that you get the crossover frequencies of your subwoofers and midrange tree and tweeters um, right, because uh, potentially you can end up with a little bit of a problem, um, and I'll, I'll explain why. So I'll call this, um, so this is frequency on the bottom here, so we'll just call it Hertz, um, and this is amplitude, but um, that doesn't really matter what scale we use on there. So if you um, have a subwoofer, um, you don't want it to be playing high frequencies granted, um, so you cross it over so that with what's known as a uh, low pass low pass filter because you're allowing the low frequencies to pass through the filter um, then you get a high pass filter because you're allowing high frequencies to pass through the filter. Now that would be for your mid-range um, or if you've got a coaxial um, driver that does uh, high frequencies as well then that's that's what you would do. Um, if you had a three-way system it would be slightly different so you've got your low frequencies, your mid-range frequencies and then you've got your high frequencies. Um, yeah, so all of these have frequency points at which you will set them to start activating. Now I'll explain a bit about that now because if you set these wrong, you'll end up with big humps in your um, in your frequency response, um, and that won't sound good. You'll get it potentially sounding quite muddy, or um, if it's in the mid range, it'll just sound quite honky. Um, potentially, so you just want to make sure that that's absolutely right. Okay, so let's say we set our low frequency subwoofer at 100 hertz. Okay, um, now you'll work that out because you will have had a look at the frequency plot that comes with your speakers or on uh, the specifications that they that the manufacturer will have provided. And what you'll see is that it's efficient and hopefully quite a flat response up until a certain frequency. Now you want to go back from that, if it's a subwoofer, lower down slightly so that you still get the um, control. So right, what we're saying is this one crosses over at 100 hertz, yeah? Okay, now if we crossed the mid-range over at 100, at 100 hertz as well, so let's say that 100 hertz ends up being there. Okay, so it's there. That's when it starts to get activated by the crossover. Um, if we were to use our mid-range and cross it also over at 100 hertz, in theory, that would work fine. But in practice, not necessarily. Because um, what you'll end up with your frequency response of the whole system is something that looks a bit like this. Now remember we've got 100 hertz over here. You potentially will end up with a bit of a hump in your system. Now the reason for that is that wherever you get uh, two drivers that are in phase with each other, that means that uh, they're pushing out uh, a positive wave at the same time as each other, um, you will get addition. So that's why you end up with a slight hump there um, and that won't sound very good because that'll sound like uh, potentially if it's at 100 hertz it'll sound quite boxy um, like you're in a, a really boxy room or you know quite resonant uh, space and just it just won't sound very good so what you want to do potentially with your system now this is where looking at your drivers specifications is going to help you it's not the perfect way to do it however but um, it will help you. So, subwoofer. We're going to cross it over. Let's call it. Let's call it um, 80 hertz. Okay, because it's more efficient lower down. So we crossed it over at 80. Yeah. Okay. So that's fine. Now mid range. 
these ones seem to be efficient all the way down to 80 hertz, but we don't necessarily want to drive that much low, low energy through them. So we could cross them over at about 100 hertz. Now, the result of, of that is that there is a difference between here and here. Now we could say that's probably about we could say that's about three dB um, or six dB. It doesn't really matter, but what it what it means is that um, you've worked out mathematically. You can work it out if you want to. Um, the best way to do it is um, do it by ear, or even better, use something called a real-time spectrum analyzer. Now you can get those uh, for uh, your mobile phone if you've got an iPhone, Faber Acoustic do one, um, but unfortunately the microphone on, a, um, on an iPhone isn't very good uh, right the way through the audible spectrum, so you'll end up with a um, not particularly accurate measurement, but it'll give you some idea. And then finally, use your ears, very much use your ears, because when even if you use the best real-time analyzers um, in studio situations, you'll still need to rely on um, your ears to, to listen to it because a, a perfectly flat system response, um, absolutely perfectly flat like that, is not going to sound very good, potentially. Um, it all depends on, on what's going on um, with the environment that you're in. Uh, motor vehicles are particularly difficult to, to make them sound right um, and that's where proper system design, so getting getting these crossovers right, matching your components, so your low frequency with your with your mid-range, with your high frequency, making sure that they're all efficient um, at the frequencies that you've decided to cross them over at uh, and in between as well. Um, and you'll end up with a very smooth sounding system. So I hope this has been helpful.